Luanda are also on the line and two speakers from Luanda. Uh, welcome to this workshop. Um, uh, as I said, my name is Mark Mazarak. I work as deputy head of the mission at the Netherlands Embassy in Angola, but I'm here with the uh, complete uh, economic team uh, with two speakers. Uh, our economic team is uh, quite a large team. We have two trade officers. There's me. And of course, uh, we have a very active ambassador who's actually uh, our biggest uh, uh, biggest uh, uh, player in the terms of uh, trade promotion. Um, of course, there's also the support staff from RVO and uh, Mrs. Nadesh uh, Alfonso is also with us uh, in this meeting uh, uh, to provide us support from the Netherlands. Today, we have a great program for you. Uh, we have uh, three speakers, Mr. Anna, Leeuwe, Anna van Leeuwen, uh, who is Nellis ambassador to Angola. Uh, he's been serving in Luanda for two years now, so he has quite a bit of experience. And he will be sharing some of that experience with us, what he's doing and what the embassy is doing and what the embassy can do for you. Uh, then there is Mr. Antonio Henriquez da Silva, the chairman of the board of directors of APEX, and quite well known for his role in promoting and attracting foreign investments uh, and exports from Angola. Uh, and with all, within this role, but he will, he will be telling us all about that. He places special emphasis on processing of investment projects and the monitoring of those projects. And then we will move on to Mr. Caterino Fontes Pereira, who is the general manager at the National Council for Freight and Logistics. Uh, executive, he's an executive with a solid leadership experience at the national and international level, active in different areas, uh, 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 mostly being uh, shipping uh, and the oil sector. So very much looking forward to hearing from these speakers. Our program will be built up basically in three phases uh, uh, in the, the sequence of the speakers that I mentioned, and we will allow the speaker to talk to you about 10 minutes, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less, which whatever they prefer. And then there's 10 minutes for you as participants to ask questions uh, and to dig into things that are interesting for you. Uh, by that, I want to kick this off, uh, but not before I said a, said a special word of thanks to uh, Mr. Armindo Teuns, our Senior Trade Policy Officer, and Mrs. Nadesh Sango Afonso, the Private Sector Development Coach, because basically they've done a lot of work to get this whole workshop organized, to get the speakers here, to get the technical stuff working. So thank you for that, uh, for making this all possible. Um, having said that, I'd like to give the word to Mr. Anne van Leeuwen, uh, the Netherlands ambassador to Angola. Anne, please. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here. And I would like to start with thanking NABC for organizing this. I just mentioned that uh, all over Africa, colleagues of ours in the different embassies that we have are involved in sessions like we have, and that's a great initiative. And I think it's very good to to focus on on the possibilities and potential that there is uh, for doing business in Africa. I'm Anna van Leeuwen. I'm the Netherlands ambassador in Luanda, Angola. Um, Mark was so kind as to introduce me and the rest of my team as well, so I'm not going to repeat that. What I would like to do is just to to be uh, to give a brief overview. So why do we have an embassy here in Luanda, Angola, and what are we doing? And the reason for having an embassy here, um, I think, is, is also the reason for Dutch business and entrepreneurs all over the world to do business in Angola, because there are a couple of reasons that we find Angola an important country to be present. In the first place, it's still the third economy of, um, of Sub-Saharan Africa. So it's a big economy. There's lots and lots of money to be earned and lots of business going on, even though there is a crisis. We think there's big potential uh, in this big economy. And also, Angola is a quite important country in the region. It's one of the bigger African countries. It plays an enormous political role in, in, in the region here. It's important to be here. And um, what we are doing is uh, trying to, to be in support of the Dutch interest, of course. That's what all embassies do. We try to do that in a kind of multi-sectoral, integrated manner. So we combine our economic work with development approaches and working with civil society and our political work. Um, though the main interest that we have, the main reason for having an embassy here in Luanda has always been the economic work, trade promotion and coming up for the interests of the Dutch 
uh, businesses. But we always think that we can do that in a win-win situation. We we are not the, the hit and run kind of, of uh, diplomats. We are here to stay and to work with local counterparts. And that's particularly important now that we do see a, a, a slump, of course, it's COVID-19 that is a reason, but also the general economic situation in, in, in Angola has been dire. And we would be, we are much in support of the endeavors of the current government to try to counter that with a policy to diversify, to diversify the economy and the economic work. It, of course, traditionally has always been oil and gas here, what has been the name of the game, and that's what we are very much involved in as well. But we do feel that supporting Angola in the diversification of the economy is a, is a very important step and very important to this win-win that I mentioned. Um, so what do we do? We have decided to, to focus on four areas in our economic work. The first one is particularly in the, in the energy sector, as I mentioned, that has traditionally been the case. Oil and gas is the name of the game. But we also see much potential for the for let's say um, making some distance to the to the old-fashioned fossil industry and go into renewables. So that's the sector that we feel is really very uh, promising. This, the the second sector uh, that we feel that we can do a lot um, is a traditional um, mainstay of Dutch economic work, and that's the water sector. Of course, the Netherlands has been for centuries and centuries an important player. We have a lot of, of knowledge and expertise in that sector, and we see a lot of prospects in Angola to work with uh, Angolan counterparts in the water sector. Um, the third and fourth sector, I think, are the most interesting currently and are interlinked. It's, it's uh, the agro sector, uh, agriculture, um, and the sector of logistics and transport. And we are working very much together with, with the other two presenters that you will see in a minute, uh, Mr. De Silva and Mr. Catarina Pereira. Um, we have been quite active the last uh, two years in working with those two, with, with, with counterparts here in seeking the opportunities in the first place in agriculture and second place in transport and logistics. Um, just before the whole COVID crisis started, we had a very, very successful trade mission, particularly in the agro logistics uh, field and then uh, particularly in the field of well, fruit, vegetables, dairy as well, we see possibilities and, and potatoes. And um, we combine that, as I said, with the whole value chain. Uh, so it's not only agriculture, it's the whole logistical value chain that we try to be involved in. And that's, it's important for us, it's important for Angola, and it's important uh, uh, in, in our cooperation. Um, so we, we do feel that there's much potential, there's a lot to do. Um, Angola, I can add, is not a country which is, uh, is let's say, a hit and, and, and run. You have to be here, you have to come back, you have to come back, and you have to come back. And that's what we are here for as a Dutch embassy, to, to assist you, the Dutch entrepreneurs, um, to come back. And um, our team is, is small, but very efficient, very professional. And my main message here today on all of you is um, never hesitate to call upon us. There's nothing that we would like to do more than assist uh, our counterparts and our clients. Um, and uh, I hope to see all of you here in Angola or in the Netherlands or on the screens and continue the cooperation. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Anna, uh, uh, for uh, this message. Uh, you talked about uh, our embassy being about no hit and run embassy. We are there uh, for the long haul. Uh, supports to the diversification of the economy is one of the main points that we are there. Uh, uh, and you mentioned most interesting sectors being agriculture and logistics, uh, seeing a lot of potential there. Uh, and last but not least, the best message, uh, don't hesitate to call us. We are there to help. So uh, uh, I, th I hope that summarizes it well. Um, um, can I invite uh, uh, participants to ask questions if you have those for uh, Mr. Anne van Leeuwen? Maybe, maybe just uh, for me to kick it off from my side, Anne, you're talking about uh, support that the embassy can offer. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What, uh, what support? you have been offering in the past uh, and could be offering in the future for those 
uh, participating in the workshop. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's a great question. Um, well, as I mentioned, the, the most significant thing that we did last uh, uh, couple of months or the last year is organizing this trade, uh, this trade mission. Um, and that it's, it's in, has been an interesting pro uh, process with you, Mark, and particularly also my colleague Armindo Turns uh, can add to that uh, because they have also been involved uh, quite, quite, uh, quite a lot. Um, it has been an interesting process, I think, and, and kind of an example how, uh, how these things can be done how we organize this trade mission, because the trade mission um, was one thing, but we prepared, it has, been, it has been coming for quite some time. We have been preparing things. We have, first we started with, of course, uh, consulting with, with our local counterparts, like, uh, like uh, um, Esther de Silva and Catarina Pereira, who have been very active. Also, um, getting a consultant to do a kind of first mapping, as they called it, um, to see what are the potential uh, uh, in the in the um, in the food sector and in the, the agriculture sector in a broader sense, so we had a very good uh, we had a, a, like agriculture shoot. The ground was prepared. We did a lot of uh, a plowing before the seed could go in the ground, um, and then we organized the mission. We had, we reached out to Dutch entrepreneurs in the field together with our agricultural attaché. Uh, and and uh, the sector organizations in the Netherlands. So that's one example. Organi uh, getting getting the data right, getting the information right, not not being guessing around, but really do it kind of in a kind of scientific manner, and then reach out to local counterparts in Angola, private sector as well as of course the uh, the, the public sector, um, and get them together. So we are as diplomats, as economic diplomats in this manner. Um, we are honest brokers, so we know people, and people know us, and and we bring them together, and and that's the way we are the kind of the grease in the machine, and and try to see how we can make connections and make uh, uh, lines between the dots, and uh, and of course we do have expertise on, on on what's going on here. We can advise about possible counterparts, and again, that's my main message today. Our door is always open, our inbox is always open, and our telephone is always on. So uh, we, we are there for you as Dutch entrepreneurs. I see, I, I see a question of Mark uh, Dieleman uh, in, in, the, in the chat box. He asks, can the embassy assist in getting money out of the country? I think that refers to, um, to, the, to the whole uh, foreign exchange issue that we have had a lot about. Um, and I think there's no one better equipped here to, 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 to give a short brief on that as uh, my colleague Armindo does, because he had been working quite intensively on this whole issue. Uh, Armindo, can you, can you give a short answer to, to Mark uh, Dieleman's question about what is, the, what is the situation now about getting hard currency, the dollars and the, and the, um, and the, and the euros back, or are you kind of put up with a mountain of, of Kwanzaas if you're doing business here. Yeah. No, um, yeah, also thank you very much for, for everybody attending this uh, session. I hope that everybody can hear me well. I think this is an, an, an old issue. Uh, it's not quite resolved, but we have to be uh, uh, also understanding of the situation worldwide being an oil exporting country and depending for much for their, their foreign currency balance from the exploitation of oil. But in this case, I think the situation is much better than I think maybe 2016, 2017. So it's still an ongoing process. Uh, naturally, we have to be involved and be aware that this is still the situation, but it's not on level that we, uh, uh, that we witnessed two or three years ago. If then we had a situation that you're waiting eight months, seven months for your money, now we see that is, and there's actually no Dutch company at the moment that we are aware of that uh, uh, knocked the door of the embassy uh, for assistance. Uh, naturally, we are not an, a player in the economic field and the, uh, not, we are not an actor, but we can always try to assist to facilitate communications with the central bank, with the commercial banks and, and try to find solutions. But naturally, the, the market itself has to find a way to, to, to resolve this issue. But uh, things are much better. I think also thanks to the, 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 the actions taken by this new uh, government, uh, it's the situation financial market is much better. But we are always here to assist once again uh, through, our, through our office. We are here to hear and help uh, lend a helping hand where possible. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that, uh, Armindo. Very clear. 
Um, any other questions? Uh, otherwise, I would suggest we move on to the next speaker. Speak now or for now, hold your peace. There we go. Then I suggest we move on to the next speaker. Uh, our next speaker is Mr. Antonio Henriquez da Silva. He's chairman of the board of director for Apex, who I've already introduced him. So I give the floor to you, uh, Mr. Da Silva. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much to the organizers, in particular to His Excellency uh, Ambassador and Van Lunen, and also to my fellow panelist, uh, Caterino Fontes Pereira. As you said, I am the chairman of uh, Apex, the agency for private investment and uh, exports of Angola. I will drive you through, um, uh, let's say, uh, a conversation about uh, the main reforms that uh, Angola is performing and uh, what's, to, for a start, what's the mission of uh, Apex. Apex is the agency that's entitled to imp of the implementation of the government uh, uh, policy on the investments and exports. Our objectives uh, are the improvement of the business environment and the facilitating the investment process. What, how do we do it? What's our core business? So we promote and attract private investment. We, uh, the promotion of exports and the internationalization of uh, uh, Angolan companies. And we also do the evaluation of private investment proposals through a, 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 an IT platform. And we also assist investors into the legal process that uh, uh, goes along uh, the investment uh, uh, initiatives. And we also give them the in institutional support and in cooperation with other public uh, uh, entities. So I'm not going to take you uh, across the country profile uh, since uh, Angola, as it has been said already, it's uh, the largest uh, one, second largest pr producer of oil. So we, we have uh, an economy that mainly dependent on oil production. And now we want to, to, to switch to all other uh, important uh, sectors that have the potential to grow and generate the wealth and to attract investment. So uh, when we are looking at uh, why should you invest in Angola, we should first look at the market potential. Um, since we are 30 million inhabitants and we have uh, the possibility through Angola to access a regional market that has more than 300 million possible consumers, the SADC region. So we, for that to happen, we need to increase um, the domestic production capacity and also the import reduction with private investment in priority sector. Uh, in terms of uh, the political uh, um, situation, so we are a stable country with democratic regime and free elections. There is political will, government uh, focus on attracting private investment, creation of a competitive environment, and also uh, there is the new government has put in place an investment uh, incentives fiscal program, and uh, it, it encourages the diversification of the economy. There is also strong uh, lead on fighting corruption and uh, promotion of uh, good governance. Uh, on the, the economical side, uh, the, there is also the creation of uh, free zones and trade zones, and we are part also of the, the initiative of uh, African Free Trade Agreement. There are still some challenges, of course, and those challenges are related to the infrastructure and uh, human capital and business environment. Of course, on those key uh, those key elements, we need to improve, and we see see them also as opportunities for for inv investment. On the advantages side, uh, Angola has a huge uh, agriculture potential. We we have uh, 50 million hectares of. Uh, Forest, 35 million hectares of uh, arable land, and only 16% uh, is uh, currently in use. And we have also uh, 1,650 kilometers of coastal uh, um, uh, 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 by the sea coast. So uh, in terms of uh, trade zones and agreements, we are part of the SADC, AGOA, uh, WTO, and AFTA. The pillars of the economic transformation are based on one side on the private new private investment law uh, that which was uh, uh, which is in place since uh, uh, in 2018, the competition law and the anti-corruption campaign on one side. On the other one, there is a privatization 
program under which 195 uh, assets are being uh, uh, sold. And there is also a, a program called Prodesi, that's a program for the support of local production, diversifications of export and import substitution. There is also a program of macroeconomic stabilization and uh, the, the exchange rate uh, uh, liberalization. When looking at the economic diversification strategy based on, on private inv investment, we want to, to, first of all, increase uh, our external competitiveness, increase the diversification of tax uh, revenues and foreign exchange to have a, a positive impact in productivity. Uh, with the, the, the import reduction, we, we intend to increase the local production, a production of raw, transformation of raw materials, and also pro production of basic foods. That will enable us to increase our exports, increase the national production of local consumption and exports, generate export opportunities. Of course, all of that could, can only be uh, uh, transformed into reality if we have a legal uh, uh, framework that uh, helps us to, to, to achieve that. The, our new legal framework is based on six pillars, uh, pillars that are um, on the investment amount because we, we had before uh, a minimum investment amount, so we have removed that barrier. The priority sectors, we have defined a priority sector so that we can have uh, uh, in account uh, um, a, a, a plan on how to address both the challenges that we face in terms of diversification, but also to correspond to expectations from the, the investors. So we have divided the country into development zones. We, we have in place the, the investment regimes, and we must, of course, under those six pillars, to also guarantee investors' uh, rights and jurisdictional guarantees. On the, the private investment law, uh, the changes that are basically the main ones to highlight are the ones that are related to the non-existence of a, a minimum in, in investment amount. There's no need for a local partner. The country was divided in, in four zones uh, so that uh, the asymmetries are lower at the highest level and the sustainable development is brought all across the country because of its potential. And also there is a, a new tax intent incentive uh, scheme that uh, uh, we believe it's going to, to, is going to be uh, more attractive for investors. And uh, uh, on the side of the dividends and profits, uh, all can be transferred. In terms of priority sectors uh, that benefit from fiscal reduction, that we have divided the, 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 the sectors into uh, main ones like agriculture, food and, and agro-industry, production and distribution of electricity, uh, industrial transformation on forest, resource and forestry, education, uh, basic sanitation, construction, public works, textile, clothing and footwear. Of course, I will be able to, 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 to share more information on this um, uh, with the organi or, or organizers in, in a paper that we have put together. On the side of the fiscal benefits, uh, uh, of course, because it's, it's very important also to highlight that since the investors are always looking for uh, ways to, 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 full, to take full advantage of the, the investment that they are making in terms of financial returns, uh, Angola has adjusted also its uh, fiscal policies so that uh, uh, across the country and based on the regions where the investments and the sectors, uh, such a scheme, uh, enables to, to, to also represent a, a, a value add to the investor environment proposal. Uh, when it comes to the investors' rights, I believe it's important to highlight that they are entitled to, uh, uh, to repatriate amounts corresponding to dividends. They are also uh, entitled to repatriate amounts corresponding to the product of the liquidation of the enterprises, if, if that's the case and also amounts corresponded to, to the compensation uh, payable to them. Uh, amounts corresponded to royalties and other income from the re renumbering of direct and uh, indirect investments associated with the transfer of technology. From the jurisdictional guarantees, it's important to highlight that in the event of a dispute uh, that uh, the investor may uh, access Angolan courts uh, which recognize equal rights uh, to all in investors. As an alternative uh, means of dispute, we, we can also 
related to the private investment, enable uh, prioritize negotiation, uh, conciliation, and uh, mediation. Uh, going to a, a very particularly important sector because of its potential, which is uh, the agriculture one, Angola, as I said, has uh, uh, 35 million hectares of uh, arable land. Out of those, only 16% uh, are in use. There is also uh, an incre extensive grazing area for livestock production in the south. There is also a pasture land that represents 43.3% 40, of the uh, land available uh, for farming in the provinces of the central and south of uh, Angola. It's a, it's a country that's uh, covered by a climate that is fa favorable to farming, allowing in some regions harvest uh, uh, twice uh, per year. Uh, when it comes to the agro-logistics, and uh, since uh, uh, the Netherlands is an important player in that sector, we believe that uh, because of uh, the room that we have in the country in terms of uh, improvement, there is also an opportunity to, in, uh, to invest. And of course, uh, Caterino we, it will be in much better position to, to go into details uh, uh, into that uh, uh, subject. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, energy, there's also um, an opportunity of investment because it goes side by side to the, the need of uh, uh, investment in, in agriculture, in other uh, sectors as uh, uh, a complementary important uh, key uh, sector. And Angola has also a, a huge potential and a plan uh, by the Ministry of uh, Energy and Waters in regarding that. His Excellency, the Ambassador, has already mentioned that there is cooperation with the, the Netherlands in, in that aspect. So, I will not go into detail, but invite uh, other investors to come and to look at the opportunities that we have to offer in, the, in, in that field. Uh, uh, closing, uh, uh, as a closing note, I would like to, to highlight the role of uh, IPEX as the investor gateway, the investor focal point uh, of contact to access the public services to facilitate and simplify and to assure the compliance with deadlines uh, on the executions of projects with negotiated timeline. All of that is possible to, to achieve uh, through access uh, to the platform set up that's online, one that works, it's uh, accessible 24 seven and uh, with the, the, also the indication of uh, 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 an inter and a counterpart in uh, in Apex to follow uh, the investors' needs uh, all the way from start to to the end. I'm I'm here to to then to answer to any questions that might raised up so that we we can go deeper into the discussions on why to invest in Angola. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Da Silva, for uh, this very clear presentation. Um, you, uh, I think you uh, stated quite clearly why uh, Angola is an attractive option for investment, mentioning just some of the things. Uh, second larger producer of oil, so it's quite an economy. Uh, the Sadiq region, of course, is very accessible uh, through Angola. There's political stability. Uh, uh, there's a government who understands investment. I think that's, that, that, is a, that is a very uh, important point that you made and the promotion of good governance. You mentioned free trade, uh, free zones and trade zones, which people work in, privatization programs. So there's lots, uh, lots of opportunities. You also mentioned challenges. I think that's, uh, I'm glad you did because uh, without challenges, without, without acknowledging the challenges, uh, you can never improve. Uh, and I, I believe you mentioned human capital as being one, uh, but it's good to see that. Uh, Angola and your agency is aware of uh, the challenges which are out there because that's the only way to start start solving uh, those challenges. Um, uh, you also mentioned, and I, I just found that interesting, there's quite a bit of arable land uh, because there, uh, amidst our uh, audience, there's two, at least two uh, agricultural people who are there, one working in the seed sector and the other working in the potato sector. So I think that's that's a good and clear message to them uh, two crops per season, or lots of arable land. Uh, that's that's interesting, I think, for any uh, person from the Netherlands uh, or working in Africa to hear about. Um, having said all that, thank you. Uh, can I uh, invite the audience to uh, uh, pose some questions, please? 
Estou ocupado. And if not, let me just kick it off because I have I, I have one burning question which I really w wanted to ask you uh, uh, because we are of course here uh, with the Dutch uh, Africa Days. What what would you say uh, would be a good investment opportunity opportunity specifically for the Dutch uh, private sector? Well. Um... I would not answer to, to the question by not highlighting that all, um, since because of the country's potential, there is a, a lot of room for investment. And uh, therefore, um, we had to define, be, be, be based on that potential, some of the sectors. And within those sectors, when we look at uh, what uh, uh, Netherlands has to offer, because we, we must look also at, at the, those priorities in terms of the, the expertise that investors might represent in, and in fields like logistics and in fields like uh, shipping and agriculture. Uh, as we look at as a value chain, there is plenty of things that we could, we could count on investors coming from, from Netherlands. And because of uh, those highlights that I've made, I believe that IPEX plays an important role in ensuring that uh, when that decision is brought up, that we are able to respond at the levels of the expectations that uh, investors are, are uh, uh, challenged to, and also comparing to other countries, because we are not only competing with the, the, our own market, but we are also competing against other African countries that even today, as we are in this session, and the uh, Excellence, the ambassador has mentioned, other missions are doing the same. So we are challenged and we, we really think that uh, in, uh, our value proposal can be based on the potential, but also on the increasing will of Angola to improve uh, uh, and to, to, to actually uh, uh, that improvement make it uh, measurable and consistent. And for the last two, three years, we can see that it's actually happening and be, it has been measured as such. And uh, which, um, uh, because I, I, you mentioned some uh, specific uh, advantages towards uh, investing in Angola, but are there specific incentives that you are giving, uh, uh, which you would like to highlight for us uh, when, when people would be considering uh, investing in Angola? Yes, um, um, we, we, we have, right now, we have um, incentives that are based on First on location, so the country was divided in four zones, A, B, C, D. And as you move from the, the coastal region into the interior, uh, the, the, the increase of uh, impact of uh, incentives is higher. So that is on one side, based on, on the geographic location and also based on the, the, the kind of uh, sector that you are investing in. On, on the other hand, we have two uh, fiscal benefits regimes which one is the fiscal pre-declaration one, and we, we, we have a, sec, a second one, which is uh, the special regime. And there is also under discussion uh, the, a third one, which is the contractual one. And under the contractual one, you are going to be based with, to negotiate on a one-to-one -one basis with the government on incentives according to uh, specific uh, KPIs that are related to the project. Meaning if you have a, a, a substantial amount of investment or if you are going to, to promote uh, the, the job creation in such a measure that we see as, a, as a, an important factor from the employment perspective, of course, we will, we will negotiate. And also, it's important to, to, to look at the percentage of reduction of tax and the period of validity based on those same zones. And as you look at those zones and as you move towards uh, the interior, and if you're looking, let's say, at a sector like the agriculture one, where the interior actually has more uh, uh, available arable land and in much uh, better shape for, for, uh, for those uh, uh, agriculture-related activities, you will see that the percentage of uh, tax reduction is, uh, it's much, has a much higher impact. And we believe overall that uh, we are looking at tax incentives as a dynamic uh, offering. And we, if we look in, back in the years, how, where are we coming from and what we have achieved so far, there is uh, plenty of uh, 
flexibility that uh, shows that Angola wants to actually to, to make uh, our uh, uh, investment environment much, much better and in terms of offering uh, to compete with the peers that uh, in Africa or elsewhere that have shown good results in that regard. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that's that's quite clear. And uh, well, uh, maybe you've convinced some of our listeners uh, to to uh, uh, get a bit more interested in investing in Angola. What what steps would you advise uh, these people if if they are would be considering investing in Angola? What what would what what would be their first steps to get started? Well. Uh... Taking advantage first of the, the new normal, and this is something that I believe we, uh, we, we should highlight, all of us, that the new normal has enabled us to, to get together much easier. So uh, this platform, as we are talking to, to you and we are talking to, uh, I hope, hundreds of other interest parties, we, we can actually establish sharing contacts and, uh, and book meetings and uh, start from there. That's... Uh, the, the quick win that this new normal has enabled us to to reduce distances. On on uh, on uh, on uh, a second note, we would probably uh, look at uh, based on the, the shown interest, what exactly in what sector uh, the the investor, a particular investor, wants to to uh, to invest in, so that we can then assist him in getting in in contact with the with the, the relevant public uh, sector uh, ministries so that uh, 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 a more insight is given to the investor. But overall said, we, we are here to assist no matter what level of uh, inquiry is in question, even preliminary ones, we, we are here to, to help and uh, drive uh, investors through uh, creation of and facilitation and of course the necessary simplification of processes. Thank you so much. Uh, thank that seems very clear. So uh, uh, when people are interested, uh, uh, those should be sensible st steps to follow. And of course, if you want to know more, you can also get in touch with us at the embassy and we can refer you uh, to uh, the right people to get started. Uh, thank you so much for that very insightful uh, presentation. Um, um, uh, we will move on to the next presentation, which I think is going to be a shared presentation, if I understand it correctly, because Mr. Catherine Fontes Pereira, General Manager of CNC, Consiglio Nacional de Carradores, I'm sorry about my pronunciation, <laughs> still practicing, uh, but I understand that Armindo is going to kick off with the presentation, uh, and Caterino, then you will uh, pick up from there. Is that correct? Yeah. The... Not, yes. Gonna make the presentation and uh, can you guys can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Israel's uh, ambassador of the Netherlands, uh, the uh, uh, member of the panel. Uh, it's a pleasure, yeah, honor for for me. Representing the Ministry of Transportation on this uh, terrible event. So, on behalf of the Ministry of Trans Transport, I would like to thank for the, this invitation. So, as uh, Mr. Antonio said, so just to explain about the advantage and the benefits to invest uh, in Angola. I will talk a little bit more about the, what is uh, our role, is the, the agrologists, where we uh, have been working together with the embassy of uh, Netherlands in Angola, and uh, we had very good results. And uh, so it's important to everyone that are uh, attending this, uh, this conference that uh, Angola has made uh, any change to, to, in order to improve the standard of living of the, uh, our population. For that, uh, the logistics chain is very important. 
So, uh, on our presentation, what we are trying to, to, to tell is to show the development of the supply chain uh, design. So, uh, where more for the agrologists, where we start and where we finish. Here, we are showing that we start on, uh, from uh, the... Okay, good, good, thanks, thanks. So, it, the first one, please. No, no, the first one, that's it. No, no, up, up, up. <laughs> we might have up. Okay, the second one. Okay, yes, there we go. yeah, this one. Okay, so, uh, this is one. If you can see what we are trying to show here is that uh, it's very important that uh, all departments, all the ministerial departments, they uh, communicate between itself to, in order to make the uh, chain work. Uh, so, and what is the role of the Ministry of Transportation? The, our role is to help, you know, the, the part of the production to transport and to make the infrastructure logistics for the Ministry of the Commerce, the one that will trade the product. So, here, as we can see, if the, those, the, all these uh, departments are not uh, working together, it will be quite difficult to uh, uh, achieve uh, this goal. As today, so uh, uh, the government recently approved uh, a law, a diploma that uh, Develop, make the steps to develop this chain uh, uh, logistics, where the Ministry of Transportation is part of this uh, this team. So, <clears throat> what is our role? The role of uh, Ministry of Transportation is really to uh, contribute positively for the transportation warehouse and consolidation of the, the cargo. Uh, we can, uh, but we can pass to the next one. So here, we're going to explain a little bit what the, the change that we, the executive did in order to make the things work. Uh, Conselho Nacional de Carregadores, the Angola Ships Council, has the responsibility uh, as the role to do the certification of all cargo that is come to Angola and from Angola, as well as also the responsibility to implement the logistics platform in Angola. So, uh, with the new environment for the doing business in Angola, the government understood that it's very important to change, to create mechanisms that will help all the investors to invest in Angola well create regulations that the ones that come to Angola they will not do business without knowing what are the uh, what's going on what are the rules in, in Angola so uh, recently on uh, November 24 the board of ministers approved the new agency that will implement the 
da logística in Angola. This uh, agency is called the uh, Agency of Regulation Certification of Cargo and Logistics of Angola. The main uh, the main role of this uh, agency, as you can see, is to regulate all transaction uh, on a logistic side is to certificate all the cargo that is, as I say, in and out, and as well to help the investors to uh, invest in Angola and our logistic side. Uh, so, yeah, we can pass the next. Uh, this slide is very important for since we are talking about the private investment or we say about the uh, foreign investment so we could not you know do uh, implement the logist platform or the agrologist as we can say without uh, looking for the legal diploma that regulate this activity. This is what we have done, as uh, Mr. Antonio Silva uh, referred to some of the, the change that we, we made. So here, this law, that is the, the law 315, it is the law that uh, regulates the implementation of a uh, platform logistics in Angola. So we, on a legal part, we have three important uh, aspects that we can consider for the uh, in, in private investment. You know, this law is more uh, simplified. You know, we have uh, a as we say in past, uh, the partnership between the public and the private company has a lot of the uh, requirements and also uh, has asked the, uh, the private investor or the foreign investor to come with a certain uh, requirement. This law today has changed is more simplified. Uh, this law has also another thing. It has a very uh, compatible mechanism for the tax example, as Mr. Uh, Mr. Antonio said, and also uh, the, the contract for this. Uh, for the implementation of uh, the uh, platform logistics, they are more robust. What we can say, so, we, today we can have a private, private concession and not as we had in the past, that the foreign uh, investor should have a partnership with Angola uh, partner. So, as the, the, today's law allows that uh, everyone that wants to invest on a logistics platform can come and invest by uh, itself. Uh, the other part is that the, this law has a possibility for the investor long time. We are talking the conception for 30 years and this can be extended for 30 more years based on uh, three different uh, extension on 30, 10 and 10, 10 years. Also, this law allows the concession of TBOT and give also the uh, 
three down for the professional. So it, these are very important aspects that uh, want to invest in Angola when we will read the law will be really uh, very uh, familiarized with the law and see that okay I'm investing on a very solid and well environment uh, in Angola. And also, one important uh, aspect that is also uh, brings is the, uh, the exclusivity of the land. You know, it can has this the land where you will be build the the, the logist platform will be exclusive on certain uh, area as well we have the customs areas on this platform logistics so those are really very important uh, aspects for ones that want to uh, invest in angola uh, on a logistics uh, platform so uh, the law is under the uh, approval of the, the parliament. We expect to have this uh, this law uh, 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 approved in uh, three months, according to the the, the, the time. But uh, so those are the really say no. I can say the major, but important change that this law uh, to the, the new law offer for the uh, uh, investors private and foreign or national investors and uh, so we are can uh, call all the Netherlands investors the potential investors because we know that uh, Netherlands is uh, one of the major uh, country and uh, agrologist uh, and uh, they have here the opportunity to uh, make their business growing and also to help Angola to develop the logistics in uh, uh, our country. Can we pass for the next one? Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Caterino. Uh, I just can I just stop oh. you there because uh, we are running out of time, and I I would like to uh, just uh, give the opportunity to the participants to uh, ask questions. Um, if I can get back to my screen, um, uh, are there any questions? Uh, uh, just just summarizing quickly. Uh, you mentioned the ministry is there to help. Uh, you're in the uh, process of, of uh, creating a new legislation, which is going to help the business environment, make it more transparent and simplify, simplify things for foreign investors. I hope that summarizes it very well, but I'll just do it quickly because of in the time that we have. Um, but are there any questions from uh, from the audience for Mr. Uh, Pereira? Mark, I believe there are some questions in the discussion and in the Q&A as well. Okay, I'm trying to get there, but uh, why didn't you go? Re oh, I, I, hear, I hear it here. I don't see them, but do you yeah, have a question? Questions that are derived from, from that, Cedric uh, Jr. Uh, what is the main concern of Dutch companies oh, operating in Angola? I think it's a very broad question, but perhaps uh, someone can answer. Who would like to take that question? Uh, Mr. Pemmer? Sorry, can you repeat the question, please? Of course. What are the main concerns for Dutch companies that are trying to operate in Angola? We already mentioned the, the money leaving the country at start, but maybe there's other aspects such as 
for example, maybe I can ask Senor Antonio a question about export. You mentioned uh, you help facilitate. What are the challenges you see companies uh, encounter the most when it comes to export in Angola? Well, that's um, a really interesting uh, question, but it's uh, as it is interesting, it's also very broad in the sense of uh, the non-existence of, um, let's say, a, a, create, a, a creative mass of investors from the from, uh, Netherlands in all different potential uh, sectors that we have in Angola. But nevertheless, I believe that uh, uh, with the opening that we are now undergoing and the reforms that are in place, um, the type of question that is just raised now is going to lower its impact. Saying that, I think that Angola, it's in the process of opening up to the world. It's opening up itself to, to the challenges that it had to, to put in place in terms of uh, uh, the legal uh, reforms that are in place, in terms of uh, 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 information that we need to share with the investors. So Apex is, is also giving a, a much, uh, 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 much uh, let's say, much higher, in, it's giving a higher priority to sharing of information with the investors. And uh, uh, as I will not uh, mention, I will not say that it's a concern, but I, I will uh, say that uh, there are challenges on both sides, on both sides, because if we do not acknowledge who are the investors looking into Angola, we cannot also uh, be able to to predict what uh, what the kind of uh, uh, concerns they might have. So let's say that we are on a, on a joint journey to approach and to exchange, and uh, events like the ones that you are promoting will definitely be of help to reduce the the impact of those. Great Thank you, Senor. And actually, of, uh, that brings me to uh, another question from Theo van der Veen uh, about me. the phytosanitary okay. regulations. You made a fair point that in order to have an agriculture framework, you need the right uh, regulations. But I can add for the embassy, uh, the embassy is working closely to other uh, European governments to help the Angolan governments to improve the uh, phytosanitary regulations. So that is something that is definitely on our, on our agenda, and uh, we will uh, elaborate more on that on, uh, when the projects evolve. And I have another question from Ganga. I think it might be the last question. She asked, sorry, he asked, uh, he wants to hear a little bit about the greenhouse production and potting soil substrates used by professional growers in Angola. What are the commercial crops being promoted right now? I think the question is, what are the commercial crops that are the most uh, popular right now in Angola? You know, what we can do, I think, okay. um, so is we can share the mapping uh, uh, research that we have done. That's a very interesting report, uh, as I mentioned in my introduction, done by a consultant named Resilience, which gives a fair overview of all the uh, the opportunities and, and also, in answer to the previous question about uh, obstacles and challenges, that's, that's a fairly good overview of what, what is the potential and what needs to be done to reach the potential. And I think that those two questions always go hand in hand. Um, so I, I think we can, if, if uh, the, the person asking this question shares his coordinates with us, we can we can share um, this report, which is, uh, is a very extensive um, answer to it, provides a very extensive answer to his question. Okay. Maybe you can leave your the person asking can leave their uh, email behind in the in the chat box, and we can uh, get in touch to uh, answer the question a bit more specifically and send over this specific information that uh, the ambassador is mentioning. Um, I have to uh, cut it short because uh, we did promise to uh, keep our time, and uh, there's uh, the next there is uh, uh, other workshops coming up. So uh, uh, thank you all speakers. Uh, I think I think we had some sometimes some difficulty. Uh, some people were not uh, seeing or listening us at parts of the conference, but I think most of it came through. Uh, it's all it's a bit of a new way of working for for everybody, but I think we'll get the hang of it uh, uh, through time. Uh, but thank you for being here, especially uh, uh, Mr. Pereira 
uh, and Mr. Da Silva uh, for giving us these very useful insights into uh, how you can work uh, in Angola. Uh, and uh, also thank you, uh, 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 Mr. Ambassador, for being here and uh, uh, telling us about the possibilities that uh, the embassy has to offer in terms of... We are out there. Feel free to get in touch with us uh, to continue this conversation and to deepen it uh, further uh, for your specific needs. Uh, we are there to help and support you. And I think uh, if I hear the gentlemen on the side uh, speaking today, they are actually e equally uh, um, uh, willing and able to, to provide support uh, should you want to do business or invest in Angola for that matter. So thank you very much, everybody, for your attention. Thank you, NAD, for giving us this platform. And of course, Armindo and Nadesh for organizing all these things so we could speak here today and meet each other. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Mark, for...